Pretend you're trying to give your friend directions. You might say something like, go 40 miles north and it'll take you about 20 minutes. Without realizing it, you actually use two very fundamentally different kind of quantities while giving those directions. When you told him where to go, you gave him a distance and a direction to go. Whereas when you told him how long it would take to get there, you only gave him a number. These two types of quantities, called vectors and scalars, have important distinctions and implications in physics that we should explore. So what exactly are they? Technically speaking, a vector is a quantity with a magnitude and a direction, while a scalar is a quantity with only a magnitude. Or, simply put, a vector is a number that demands a direction to act, and a scalar is just a number. A good example of a vector is acceleration. Every time something accelerates, it must be doing so in some direction. A good example of a scalar, on the other hand, is energy. An object does not have an amount of energy in some direction, it just has energy. Understanding the difference between vectors and scalars is very important for any physics problem. When working with the vector quantity, it is crucial that we assign the correct sign to forces, since signs indicate a direction. If, for instance, we defined up in a problem to be the positive y direction, and then, when analyzing forces in the y direction, give gravity a plus sign, we are saying that our object is accelerating upwards. Because of how sensitive vectors are to direction, we must be very careful to be consistent with our choice of coordinates and assign the correct sign to quantities. But this is not to say that only vectors can be negative. While negative signs in a vector provide information about where the quantity is pointing, signs on scalars provide information about how the quantity is defined. We can, for instance, have a negative amount of potential energy. Consider, for example, defining the zero potential energy mark to be the surface of the Earth. If we dig a hole into the surface and jump into it, the H in a formula for gravitational potential energy is negative, giving us negative energy. This may seem trivial, but is important when relating multiple scalar numbers. For example, if we made a roller coaster that goes through this hole, we can say, due to the conservation of energy, that our kinetic energy plus potential energy at the top must be the same as our kinetic energy plus potential energy at the bottom. But, since our potential energy is actually negative in the hole, it reads as kinetic at top plus potential at top equals kinetic at bottom minus potential at bottom. If we made the mistake of making our potential energy at the bottom positive, we are saying our height is positive and are really comparing our energy at the top to here. So, just like how we must be careful with signs on vectors, we must be diligent with the signs on our scalars too. Such simple mechanics, such as Newton's famous force equals mass times acceleration equation, can help scientists understand the basic motion of nearly anything. So, I'm here to teach you guys these principles too. That answers what the basic goal of physics is, but doesn't answer what we actually 